it says rotate your phone. Hello! I think we're live! Thanks guys, we're figuring this out. Say good morning St. Columbus! Good morning St. Columbus! We are here in our Molina Moore living room and we're ready to do some worship of the Holy One this wonderful Sunday. <laughs> so, um, Arthur, shall we start by say, singing Jesus We Are Here? Mm. All right, let's sing it. Jesus, no, we are here. No singing in the living room. No singing in the living room. All right, friends, I have a two-year-old. You might not have a two-year-old, and so you may already be wonderful at singing Jesus, We Are Here. So we're going to keep singing it. Mama's going to keep singing it. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. We are here, here for you. Thank you, Arthur. And friends, we have our opening prayer. And so if ever there was a time that we needed to pray, it is now. So let us love God with our hearts and our neighbors as ourselves. And let us love God with our minds and our neighbors as ourselves. Yeah, our mind. And let, how about our strength? And let us love God with all our strength and our neighbors as ourselves. All right. This is super no frills. So we're going to also sing. So one of the favorite songs in the Great Hall Worship Service is This Is The Day. And this is definitely a day for rejoicing. We still got pajamas on. We're still comfortable and cozy. And we still get to pray and be with our loved ones. So Arthur, you don't know this song very well, but I'm going to sing it. And you can jump with me whenever you want. How's that sound? All right. So let's stand up. And you, you stand up at home too. Do your stretches. All right, we're gonna sing. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. All right, I hope you got more participation in your home than I got in mine. Sweet so love, do you want to read our gospel story? No. <laughs> yes, can you sit here? All right, so this morning's... No, sit down. You want me to sit down? Okay, I'm going to sit down. We got that going. Guys, we got ourselves on a tripod. This is great. Our song, our story for today, I imagine that a number of you, like me, were gifted a children's Bible either at your child's baptism or at their birth. We got one in both. Tells you a lot about our friends. Friends, this is my behind the camera man. Hey! This is, he's actually a Presbyterian internet sen sensation. I get to live with him. Uh, the Reverend John Molina Moore is joining us. And just in time. Yes, for our Bible story. For our Bible story. So we are going to be reading actually an Old Testament story today. It's a beautiful picture. Please check it out. Ooh, here it goes. So, Arthur, this is is a story from 1 Samuel chapter 3. And a young boy named Samuel lived with a priest named Eli. Who t Eli taught him how to love God with all his heart. But Eli's sons he's were wicked. He's at the church. Yeah, he's at the church. Yep. He's at the church. And he's at the church too. Two people at a church? Whoa. Who they, do? they didn't get the memo. I'm going to continue telling the story for our friends, okay? But Eli's sons were wicked and did not listen to their father or to God. They did not respect what was holy and took what was not theirs. One night, while Samuel was sleeping, he heard a voice calling, Samuel, Samuel! 
He ran to Eli and said, here I am. I didn't call you, said Eli. Go back to bed. Samuel lied down, but again he heard someone calling him. He ran to Eli, but was told to go back to bed. Samuel, Samuel, the voice called a third time. This time, Eli understood that it was God calling Samuel. If you hear the voice again, say, speak, your servant is listening. Samuel, Samuel, came the voice yet again. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening, Samuel replied. The next day, Eli asked Samuel to tell him what God had said. Samuel was afraid to tell him, but Eli insisted, God is upset that your sons have behaved badly. And Eli bowed his head and said, he is the Lord and will do what he knows is right. Our prayer with that story is, dear God, let me hear you when you call. I love this story for right now because we're in a position where we need to be listening to God's voice in places we don't really expect to hear God. So we typically go to church on Sunday and expect and hope that God will show up in a beautiful place of worship that we are familiar with, with other Christians. And now we're sort of in the wild, but not left alone. And so I imagine that God's voice is speaking still to all of us. And so it is going to be a part of all of us our job to try to listen for what God is talking to us and what God might be saying. And so I'm going to invite you to have a conversation with your family right now, and I'm gonna have a conversation with my family, and I probably won't get much feedback, but I want us to think, what are some ways that we see or we hear God's voice in our world? So I can, off the top of my head, I can just say that seeing all the trees budding and all the flowers coming up, that is one way that I am reminded that God is still moving and God is still speaking. And so let's give ourselves like a minute and you can talk to your family and I'll talk to mine and we'll talk about where God is calling and speaking to us. All right, so are there, God is all around us. And Daddy, where are some things that you can see? I see God in all the new flowers, right, Arthur? Mm -hmm. Remember we saw flowers outside on the trees? Yeah. It's fun to see. You see the flowers out there on the trees? What about the cardinals, Daddy? Ooh. No cardinals. There's no cardinals? No. No, we don't see them today, but when we do see them, they remind us of God, right? No. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, they do to me. Yeah. Where is it? I don't know. They're not. They're sleeping right oh, now. Cardinals, come back. Thank you everyone. I think it's time for us to say some prayers. The world can use them and we can use them. You can see over here. So, loving God, we thank you that a pandemic today does not mean that we cannot be connected. We thank you for St. Columbans all over in their homes, in their apartments, wherever they are. I pray that you keep them safe and that you surround them and that they may hear your voice. God, we have lots to be grateful for and we are thank you for your many blessings. And right now I'm going to invite you to talk with your family about the things that you're thankful to God for. I'm grateful for you, Arthur. What are you, what are you, what are you thankful for, Arthur? What do you want to say thank you to God for? Are you grateful? Yeah, you are. Well, I am grateful. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that Otis finally took a nap. I am grateful that we have a home. Mm -hmm. a to go to. I'm grateful for the help setting this up. Oh, thank you. All right, dear ones. And we're gonna say, loving God, hear our prayer. And so it would be. It's now time to offer up to God what's on our hearts. Um, while we have a lot of, to be grateful for, there's also a lot of anxiety and a lot of worries. And so I'm going to invite you to share with God and with one another things that you would like God to help you with. 
I would like God to help wrangle a two-year-old. Um, but, yeah, keep going. God, we pray for the world leaders, for those who are making decisions about the health of large bodies of humans. And we pray that you give them wisdom, that you break down wall of ego, help those in power make good choices, help people make choices out of love and not a fear. In your wonderful name we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. Friends, we are going to wrap up soon for pretty obvious reasons, but we're going to we're going to keep coming to you in ways that we can pray together and that we can listen to a story together and that we can still be God's people at home. God is not confined by walls. God is not just found in churches. God is found in our homes, in our families and in our lives. So I'm going to invite you now to, to be the main, now parents, I'm talking to you. Um, the biggest influencers of any child's faith is their family. And so parents, now's the time to be praying with your kids. Now's the time to dust off some of those children's Bibles or those other stories that have full of lovely lessons that we can apply to our lives. And so let's just be really present. Let's be the ones who talk about God and who talk about Jesus in our homes. I am happy to offer as much wisdom and support that as I can. I know Katie is well aware of that that's a need and wants to help equip you parents to do this work. Um, but we're in it together. This might be really fun, actually. Um, and so let us not... In the words of someone recently, let's not waste a good opportunity to learn something new. And so I'm going to close this up in prayer, and then I'm going to find my two-year-old. Um, God, I am grateful for these people, for their generosity of spirit, for their courage, and for their heart. I ask that you be with all of us. May we feel connected, even though we are not physically in the same place. May we be full of your love and courage when the world around us rages with fear and anxiety. And may we be a people of love. In your wonderful name, amen. All right, friends, now we sing our final song. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere.